And good afternoon, everyone. This is Anthony from OTAN. Welcome to this afternoon's session, uh, Buncee for the Remote Classroom. And if Katrina, if you're ready to go, let's begin. Okay. All right, hello. How are you guys? Um, thank you so much for coming today. Um, I hope that I can give you some really usable tips um, and show you some really fun ways to use Buncee. Um, I am a user. I'm not a, employed by Buncee. I've had that question asked before. Um, and no, I am not. I just really like using it for my classes. So um, I, um, I teach at Miracosta College and I'm an ESL teacher. So I really focus on um, finding tools that my students can use that have great visuals and that have options for audio immersion um, and um, just being able to interact in new ways and use language. Um, and Buncee really does that. Um, I'm gonna just show you right here, on, just on our front page, if you see these little sound marks if you click on these little sound marks guest speaker oh wow it has katrina a, tamura ma english very, esl very impressive right it, so it'll read the um the slide for you even better better yet is if you click on the um immer immersive reader you click on that one and you have a an even lovelier voice that reads to you Okay, well, she's not working right now. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, it's not currently available right now. So for some reason, it's not available, but it does work if it's an immersive reader. So I encourage you to um, use these um, more the immersive reader because it has a very nice and not robotic voice. Um, so try that one. Now I want you to share just one challenge uh, that you've had. Um, while you are, um, while you've been um, teaching online, teaching remotely, is there anything that you've that you've had that's gone wrong? Manipulating many screens, okay. Not enough bandwidth. Oh my gosh, for um, homes and when students and parents have to share. Exactly. Yeah, uh, students not being tech savvy. You tried out Padlet recently, and that worked for you. Yeah, it's been a sink or swim experience, but thank God that thanks God uh, for OTAN. Okay, great. Um, ESOL students do not know how to access online usually and do everything on their phones. Well, Buncee is really good for um, phone users, so um, I I think I'll be able to share some things that will help you. Who, with people with students who only use cell phones. Um, audio and internet connection, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, OTAN and Christy Reyes has, have been reaching out and helping many students and teachers. Um, background noise on Zoom, right? When, when everybody's talking or when somebody comes in and starts uh, somebody else who's not involved in the class, they start talking and, um, or there's echoes. Okay. Mm. Taking time to create instructional video and slides. Yes, that it takes up a lot of time, right? Coming up with things that students can do on their cell phones, right? Ooh, no access to printers, right? Um, all right, so, um, yeah, we have a we have a lot of challenges um, and some tools that have worked really well. Um, do you have anything that you would suggest? Any suggestions for tools? Many great tools, but much of them have uh, too much text or words for be beginner ESL students. Okay. Um, any tools that have been just a complete failure? Kahoot, Kahoot's good, okay. Quiz, okay, Quizlet, Quizlet is really good. Quizlet is really nice and interactive, right? 
okay, uh, sharing YouTube videos and projecting them on Zoom. That's really great. ESL video, okay, eslvideo.com. That's another great resource. Um, slideshows, preparing PowerPoints, okay. All right, so we have some hit or miss tools and platforms, right? And we've had a lot of challenges teaching remotely, but I think we've also had a lot of successes because we're all still teaching. Our students are still there, they're logging in, they're accessing our materials. Um, so I just wanna share with you this tool that can help you if you're, whether you're using um, uh, phones, whether you're using Google Classroom, Canvas, um, if you like to use things like Quizlet or Padlet, we can use it all in Buncee. So how many of you have ever used Buncee before? Have you used it? No, nobody's used it? Oh, oh, sad. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, I'm so at this, I guess I, I should be happy that you haven't used it before because I get to to tell you about it. Okay, not you, okay. Well, um, wow, okay, that's why we're here. Yes, okay. So um, I'm gonna just tell you what it's about. What is it, okay? So Buncee is a creation and communication tool for students, educators, and admi administrators to create interactive content, allowing those of all ages to visualize concepts and communicate, uh, communicate effect creatively. So um, that is directly from Bunsy.com. And um, I use it in, uh, to deliver course materials um, for news boards, um, for students to engage in creative um, responses to activities we've done in class. Um, so let's take a look here. Um, today, we're gonna discuss how Buncee boards are used. We're gonna learn about getting a Buncee account. Um, we're gonna learn about sharing materials and course information using a Buncee board and slides in multiple ways, formats, and platforms. Okay, we're gonna learn about Buncee um, classrooms and we're going to experience building and sharing a basic Buncee board. Um, and then you're going to try um, building a Buncee and share it with me. So I hope um, that if you've never tried this before, please um, uh, stick with me, especially till the end when you get to go ahead and get your uh, feet wet and, and, and try this experience. Um, so first of all, I wanted to let you know that they, uh, Buncee is offering free accounts during um, the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? So if you click on this link, this is actually a link to Buncee and to the page, and here's also the, the web, web address. Um, you can um, get a free account for right now, um, and your school, actually, they have accounts, free accounts for schools. Um, as a matter of fact, I, since I'm a huge Buncee user, I've been using it for a long time, I pay a monthly subscription, but my subscription is going to be free for 90 days um, during this time. So they are really reaching out um, and they're making it possible for um, everyone to try this. So please um, don't hesitate. If you've never tried it before, just do it and see, see if it's useful to you. Um, because it is free at this moment. Um, and so there are multiple ways to use Buncee. Um, you can deliver multimedia presentations with access to materials links. Um, you can use stickers, animations, shapes, drawings, 360 images, photos, documents, audio, video, QR codes, hyperlinks, and embeds. You can use that all within your one Buncee board or within multiple slides. Um, you can create a dynamic news board with real-time updates. So every time you go into your Buncee and you edit it and then um, you, you post it again or you share it again, um, it's going to update. And um, so uh, students will get um, 
all new materials instantaneously as you add them. Um, I, it's, it is not, it's different than Google Classroom, but it can be used to, um, to add to the classroom and to um, create a more visually appealing um, Google Classroom as well. Um, that was a question from one of our guests. Is it similar to Google Classroom? Um, so we can also assign multimedia reading response projects. We can, by multimedia, I mean students can um, record themselves reading and post the, the audio link within a board um, and they can, uh, you can pose questions to them and they can write about them on the Buncee along with their audio. They can also insert a video um, of themselves talking about the, um, about the reading. Um, you can manage student projects and promote engagement in a Buncee classroom. So Buncee has, um, Buncee also has a classroom uh, setup where you can create classes, you can send um, materials to students within the classroom, um, and so you can send the assignment and then students can create their own boards and send them back to you all within Buncee. So it's very um, private. If, if you would like it to be private, you can just use um, Buncee Classroom and then those materials and, and the projects that, that students are create, creating are not being posted out there on the internet unless they choose to do so. Um, you can also create um, fun entry and exit tickets. Um, and Buncee has this really great um, ideas lab um, and the link is right here but if you go ahead and go to Buncee and look in the ideas lab you can click through all of the um, all of the ideas um, and see what would be appropriate for your classroom because teachers are sharing ideas all the time um, so let me see uh, in the questions here it says can Buncee board be embedded in Google classroom yes it can um, and how does Buncee differ from Google Classroom? Thank you. Um, it's, uh, I'm gonna show you how it's different, okay? So when we go, um, when I give you some examples, um, I, I'll, I'll let you tell me how it's different, okay? <laughs> let's, let's take a look. Um, so let's go to the next page here. Um, there's multiple class formats and student groups that um, Buncee will work for. Um, teachers have several ways to create learning opportunities, and students have a variety of ways to interact with and respond to class materials. Um, it's individualized and it's adaptive. There's text-to-voice, immersive reader. There's options for images, colors, text sizes, and fonts. Um, audio and video inserts. Um, we've, we've all learned about blended learning, language learning, flipped learning, differ differentiated learning, and now we're in the time of remote learning. Um, and we, this Buncee can be applied to all of those environments. Um, let's see. Um, and uh, let's see here. It, it, somebody said, I like that Buncee can be private. Yes, it can be private. Um, that's really nice, especially for our, our K through 12 friends who um, are in a, in a bind where they cannot post their, their materials, their students' work on the internet without, um, without some sort of security. Um, so one idea um, is a personal narrative with audio. So th this is a, an actual student who she wrote about um, that the assignment was to write about um, an object you had when you were young, an object from your, your childhood. So she uh, created a board, she picked the background, she picked the font, she picked the colors, um, and then she also um, added audio. So uh, in this, within this um, board, there's a little link. This is just the image of, it, of that board. Um, so I could share it with you. But if you uh, click the, the, the audio link, it would be Adina um, talking about her doll, Carolina. Um, and so she, she was able to write, create, write, and then practice her speaking. And then this was also posted to a class board. Um, I'll show you that. Um, let's 
see. Um, so this was posted to a class board where multiple students added their responses and then they could like and sh uh, like and comment um, on Adina's work. Um, and it's kind of, somebody asked me, is it like Flipgrid? Well, in that sense, yes, where you could actually um, like and respond and give feedback to your classmates. Um, on and you could see all of their work posted um, on one page. Okay, um, you can also have an independent work um, uh, and schedule board. Um, like if you wanted to uh, post, okay, you wanted to post this, right? You create your, your board um, and then you add um, the links that a student would need to work independently. Um, so this one, finish your uh, Spark video and share it. So they would click this link and it would bring them to, uh, um, to Spark video. And if they're working on a project there, they'll finish it and turn it in. Then two, okay, I'm done with that. I can read about Alcatraz and then go um, log into Google Docs and respond. Um, all right, I'm done with that. I can take a listening quiz based on Alcatraz. And then I can play a game that reinforces the grammar points we were working on or, or the skills that we were targeting. Um, and then here we go, Canvas. Log into Canvas and um, see what new assignments are available, right? So you can, um, this is kind of uh, helping students to work independently, know what to do, and they have a schedule. Um, and so that, that's one way you could use it. Another way is you could uh, create a morning message board. This is really easy because uh, it uses Buncee's audio, or bit, um, the, er, we don't need to go to a secondary source to create this. You just log into Buncee, you press record, and it records directly onto the board. So it cuts out several steps of uploads and all of that. Um, so here, this is a horrible, horrible video of mine. But <laughs> here's an example. Good morning, class. Today is April 24th, and today we're going to be learning about Buncee. We have a Zoom meeting at 1 o'clock, so make sure to check your email for the link. Okay, uh, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so um, I just went to my phone, actually, and opened up my Buncee application, and I was able to record that directly from my phone into the Buncee app onto this board. So it's very easy, and you can do it from anywhere. You don't have to be at your desktop, okay? Um, and then this is the one I wanted to show you where um, there's a, a class project board, and you have multiple students sharing what they made, um, and it um, each one has um, audio on there and it has uh, students writing um, and then you can each student could read the other's um, work uh, paper or paragraph and then comment on it and give feedback so um, this is a really fun thing to do um, okay and here this one is for um, maybe if you have really low level students and they're not writing paragraphs or they're not doing big responses, they can't make huge audio files, um, you could ha have them read something and then create a Buncee board using an image and then maybe one sentence. Um, and this one, a seven-year-old created this one and I'll show you how um, he, he read and then he uh, wrote one sentence and then um, he recorded himself reading so I could um, hear or we could deliver a sample of his reading to his teacher. In the United States, pandas live in zoos. Some pandas, some baby pandas are at born. Okay, so um, let me answer some of your questions. Um, can you link Bunsey to an LMS? Yes. Do students need an account to interact with materials on Bunsey's? No. You could, all you need is an account for yourself um, and you can send it to them. How does Bunsey use student and teacher information? Are there any privacy concerns? 
I have had no, they don't use it in any way. Um, you can actually create accounts for your students that just use, you know, my class one, my class two as their names if you want. And so you could actually assign them completely um, different names. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you how you set it up and where you share the information. Um, and can students make portfolios on Buncee? Yes, this is an extremely good way to make portfolios. All they have to do is open up their phone, um, open up their Buncee app, um, select take a picture, and they can take a picture of the work that they've done. Um, and they can um, click audio, link audio, and they can make comments about that work or respond to um, uh, group questions that way. Um, do, did each student have to log in to Buncee to do a board? No. Um, oh, wait, yes. If they, if they want to create a board, they have to log in to Buncee. Um, but for you to deliver a board, no, they don't need it. They don't need an account. Um, and do students have to create an account with Buncee in order to participate? Um, if they want to create a board, yes. If they want to receive a board, no. Um, let's see. Thank you. Okay. Um, how much are the fees for Buncee? Usually, I pay ten dollars a month. Um, is Buncee considered a learning management system? Sorry, new to distance. Okay, so um, you can you can um, you can create a classroom. You can use it as a classroom, but then you can also insert it into um, places like Google um, uh, Google Classroom and Canvas. Okay, so I hope that answered your questions. Let me know if that one was too fast um, or unclear. I'm happy to repeat myself. Um, Okay, so let's go back to the reading sample response here. That's another way. Um, sharing and compatibility. This is what a lot of people are interested. It is web-based and it can be accessed on any device. Um, it can be used on a Chromebook, a tablet, a desktop. You can use it on your, on your Android phone. You can use it on your Apple um, devices. Um, and it can be shared online or downloaded for um, offline viewing. Um, so you have lots of ways that you can um, use it. So let, let me go further into that. Um, so you can use it with Teams. If anybody's been using Teams, you can use it with Wakelet. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Google Classroom um, and Flipgrid. Um, and these are little informationals on how to use all of those. I'm not going to go through them right now, um, but I will, um, if, if you email me or um, I, I think this presentation will be posted um, for you to see um, with OTAN, so you can uh, click through these or you can visit the Buncee site and look for Buncee Remote Learning. Buncee Remote Learning. Um, and it's a it's a just like a conversation board, um, and they they have been um, putting together pamphlets and resources for students um, and teachers who are using these platforms. Now, um, I myself uh, I like to send Buncees by email because it looks really cute. So um, one of the ways you can share is by email. I mean, this is created um, by, by sending the board um, from your Buncee account. So you send it to someone as an email and it arrives in their email um, as this cute little letter. Um, and so to do that, you would have to um, share and then go to settings and you could share it as a code. Um, like an embed code or a link, it'll give you the link to copy. You can send it in your email. So if you click email, then you would select the student you want or student groups, or you can add a different user, a, a, a different email. You can email it to anyone you want. Um, and um, then this will pop up once you click email. Um, and the board will be right here and then you can put a message um, and then it'll um, be sent 
and look like this in someone's email box, okay? Um, you can um, share with students within Buncee. Um, you can uh, post it to social media sites and you can download it. You can download it as image files or as a PDF as well. Image files and PDFs do not carry the links with them, um, but just in case um, you wanted to, them just to have the information on your slides, um, you can do that. You can download it as a PDF or as image files. Um, I see I have a question here. Uh, so to clarify, students need an account to create a Buncee, but not to respond or add on to a teacher's board. Um, no, they're not gonna add on to a teacher's board. They can receive a teacher's board and interact with the teacher's board, but they cannot create themselves. They can't edit the board. Um, could Zoom recordings be sent to students in this way? Um, yes, if you posted the, um, the link and the, um, the password, if you're password protecting your Zoom recordings, um, which I suggest doing. Um, okay, so let's go on. We have, um, you can send this by text, email, or social media using your phone as well as your desktop. Um, but to send it by on your phone, you would share, you would um, log into your, you'd get your Buncee, get into your Buncee account, um, or share it with yourself, send it to yourself um, in an email or something, open it up, and then share it. Um, and you select which one you want. Um, and then you're gonna share, what kind of sharing do you wanna do? Do you wanna send this as a message, an email, use your Gmail account, your Yahoo account, your Facebook, your WhatsApp, um, any of those apps um, you can um, will appear here and you can share it that way. Um, and then, so you just select how you want to share it and then Click send, is that right? And of course, enter somebody's phone number first, um, but you can do that. You can also use this on Google Voice, right? Google Voice, this will be an easy way to um, share boards. Um, is there a limit on recording time, on, on recordings? You can change the limit. Um, I haven't found a limit yet. Um, can Buncee boards be shared on Canvas page? Yes, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, okay, so um, sharing within Buncee Classroom, you, you can set up different classes um, and then you can share with the different students that you have um, within your classroom. Um, so you just select the, the board you want, um, click on share, share with students and add all of the sections you want to share with. You can also share using the code, right, the, the link or the embed code. Now, um, and students can share back with teachers. If those same students who you're sharing with within um, the Buncee classroom uh, have created a board, they can send it back to you in the same way, um, but their, um, their control panel will, will say share with teacher. So they click teacher and they can share it. So later on today, I'm gonna ask you to create a board and share it with me. So when you share, um, select share with teacher. Okay, so let's go to sharing with Canvas, which I know a lot of you were asking about. It can be shared in Canvas. Um, this is some, uh, this is my homepage, right? Uh, my homepage banner. Um, and you can, um, I save this as an image file. Um, I created, um, on Buncee, I created a, a board and then I selected the canvas size. So I wanted it to be a banner, right? So I clicked banner and then it um, created the, the correct proportions. Um, and then I um, downloaded it, you select download, and then you click on the, the thumbnail. When you click on the thumbnail, you're creating a, um, um, a picture file. If, if you don't want the picture file, if you want a PDF, you can select download as a PDF. Um, let's see. Um, somebody asked if students will need to pay right now. It, like um, This is a, um, when you set up an account and you invite your students, they don't have to pay to join. Um, and right now, um, Buncee is free. 
Um, so let's go to the embed, um, embedding within Canvas, okay, because I know some of you are interested in this. So um, to embed in a cam Canvas page, um, you include links to your, um, you can include links to your Padlets, quizzes, audio files, video links, and whatever else you would like. Um, and this puts everything in the same place for students, right? Um, so you just uh, create a page and then, um, and then embed it. Um, and you can embed with this little icon here. Um, and this is also a cool feature. If you can't um, see an image well, you can click on the image and it will enlarge. So if you can see up here on the controls, um, you have different options of how to, in, um, how, what to insert and link. You can embed by clicking this one and sh um, entering the embed code. Um, I put a link, a secondary link here um, as well, just in case like students who are, might be using um, a, a device and it doesn't look the same as it would, would on, on my computer screen, they might have to scroll down and look for it. So I just put the link just in case they get a little lost looking for um, the embed. Um, another way you can do this is to add it as an external link. This is my favorite way to add Buncees to, to Canvas. Um, because when you add it this way, you can see how many people have viewed um, the board, and you can also you still have access to the control panel over here, the navigation bar. Um, so students can use the navigation bar to interact with um, the Buncee. Um, and each page, of course, they have dynamic uh, features to each page, and the student can interact on each page. That's the same with the embed, um, but with the embed, you don't see the navigation bar, and you don't see how many people have viewed it um, within Canvas. If you go to your account, you can always see that. Um, just to clarify, if I invite them, they will not need to pay. That's right. Even after the trial, students do not pay in any way. Um, when you create a course and you invite them. Um, so let's practice, okay? So um, I, there's so much to this and I, I want to cover as much as possible, um, but I also want to show you exactly um, what it looks like inside of Buncee. Okay, so I'm gonna show you um, adding features. So I'm going to um, edit, the presentation we're on right now. So now we're in edit mode, okay? And if you can see on the side here, I have, I can navigate my pages when I'm in edit mode. And I'm going to look for this page, okay? So we're gonna practice and I, can, I click on it. I click on my little text box and I can move it around wherever I want, right? Um, I also, I don't like this font. So I'm gonna double click double click, and then I'm going to choose which font. I like my, uh, let's see, my ribeye marrow, okay? I like this one and I need it to be a little bigger. So I'm gonna go down to my control bar and change the size. And uh-oh, do you see that? It's kind of cut off. If I click out of there, I'm missing some of my text, right? So I need to make this box bigger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we added a little smiley face there. Okay. So um, now we can add, right? We're going to add something else. Let's see. What can we add? We can add text, shapes, drawing, a Buncy 3D, an emoji, a message, a sticker. Let's go for an animation. Okay. So um, looking here for an animation. Let's see what this guy does and this one, okay? So I'm gonna click it on here and I can see that it's moving around, right? Let's see, somebody's asking a question. How do you add the Bitmoji? So I'll add that for you. So here's an animation that's been added. Now I'm, I'm gonna add um, a Bitmoji. So I'm gonna go up to my toolbar where I have my Bitmojis. And let me see here. Um, I think we're going to do the sanitize, right? So I'm going to save the image to my computer, right? I'm gonna save it. Um, and then 
I'm going to go and I'm going to add an item over here. This is add items. And I'm going to upload, uh, drag my file to the uploads. It's here, so now I can just upload it. Okay, it says sanitize, right? And if I wanted to add a link, for example, to my little um, Bitmoji, I would double click it and then click on link. Do you see down here I have options to delete this item, to add a link, to add audio, to flip it, flip it, right? Turn it upside down, okay? Um, I have different features like that. Um, so I'm gonna double click on it and add a link so I could add a link to, um, to my Canvas, to the Canvas site at my institution or um, to my Google Classroom page or something, um, or to a Quizlet, anything like that, right? Um, I can also add um, a QR code for my presentation. I don't have to spend time um, going to a website and um, messing with that and creating my uh, a QR code because it's already done for me, right? Yay, that is a huge feature, I think, for me personally. I don't know about you guys, but I love that. Um, and um, I'm gonna add, right? Um, let's see here. I could add videos from Khan, um, Khan Academy. Um, I could add a sticker, a 3D, a 360 image. Um, I could also add, this is really neat too. If um, you wanted to create a little um, interactive questionnaire, you could say like, uh, um, who is the vice president? United States, okay? And then we could say, um, Mike Pence or Oprah and free, okay? So I'm going to, I could add more, right? Uh, and this is the correct answer, so I'm going to save it here. Um, and so when I, when, I'm meeting with my students, if I preview this, I, I has, it has to be in preview for you to see all the functionality. That's why I'm doing that. Um, but I'm gonna scroll over to that page down here so I can find where we were creating. Um, here's my sanitize. Um, and, oops, it's not working right now, darn it. <laughs> but the, it, this is actually um, a fillable, um, let me edit there. Oh, bummer, I'm sorry guys. But um, you can, you, um, it will come out with little um, um, fillable uh, answers and questions. Um, it's just not doing it for me right now. Uh, so. Let me put it here and say, still not doing it. Okay, anyways, you can play with that feature later, okay? <laughs> um, but the, you can um, get a fillable answer and questions, uh, question and answer session going that way. I'm gonna delete that. So I don't like it there, it didn't work for me. So how do I get rid of it? I'm gonna click on it and then delete. It says, are you sure you want to delete this item? Yes, delete it, okay? Um, can be. Buncy be used for a test? Um, no, you could link it to a test. Um, do students need an account in order to use Buncy? Um, no, they don't need it to actually engage with a board that you share with them, um, but they do need to, they do need it to um, create a board. Um, so let's try another feature. If I want to import a URL, you can um, import a YouTube video. Uh, Vimeo, um, an image um, URL, uh, uh, you can do that there. Um, you can record a video. Um, it's not gonna work for me right now. Oh, okay, well, yay, hi. How are you? I'm doing well, this is, okay. So I'm gonna stop and you can see what's really behind me, okay? Um, and instead of my virtual background, oh no, I should have thought of that, okay? <laughs> but it's in here. Um, 
so here's my video. I can also take a picture. Um, I can, if I wanted to add an audio link to this one, so I'll add audio. You just double click on it and then you say, hello, how are you doing? This is a little guy flying in the sky. Okay, and then you upload. Okay, um, and let me test it. Hello, how are you doing? This is a little guy flying in the sky. Okay, and then I'm going to add it. Okay, so now when I'm in um, presentation mode, the preview mode, it will, um, you can click on this little flying object um, and you can hear my voice. Um, and somebody asked, uh, explain the use of the QR. So um, if this were, for example, if I print this out um, as a PDF, somebody could scan that and actually get my presentation on their phone. Um, you right now, if you scan that using a QR reader, um, you'll actually have my, uh, the presentation on your phone. Um, it, you can, you can go to a site, uh, it'll give you the link, okay? So um, that's how you use the QR. Um, where does the QR take the students? It takes it to this board, um, to the actual uh, Buncee I've been creating. Um, and when setting up, do we select individual access or request Buncee for schools? If you want your whole, if your whole school would like this, then you, um, maybe an administrator could set up the Buncee for schools. I use an individual account, an individual teacher, because my institution does not, um, does not pay for this. Um, when setting up, do we, uh, okay. All right, okay. Um, let's see. Um, anything else you would like to see me add? Just go ahead, send it to me really quick. Uh, web image, you can search if I want. Um, uh, about a frog. Okay, so it's going to look for an image of frogs. I'm going to choose Kermit. Okay, I'm going to put Kermit on there. Um, now, something that's really important that I have to stress here because I learned this the hard way uh, today. Again, if, if you want to see me add anything else, please put it in the chat or, um, but, um, uh, if you are, you can work on the same project on your phone and on your desktop, but it's important that you make sure you refresh any changes you make um, before you go and start um, editing on, um, on one of the, you know, if you're working on your phone, refresh so that that data is loaded into the cloud. Um, if you make changes on your, on your desktop, refresh and so that that, that data is, um, so everything is uploaded into the cloud. Um, today, I, I was panicking because a lot of my presentation was wiped out because I made one change and I hadn't refreshed. So that's really important. You can, you can um, edit simultaneously, but make sure you're vigilant about refreshing. Um, and actually you could, I would suggest uh, making a copy of your board. Um, if it's, if it's a, like something like this, where you're going to be presenting in a few minutes and you don't have <laughs> time to you know, reinvent the wheel. So um, let's see, let's look at the questions here. Um, if students want to use vegetable garden, Buncee, in order to move the stickers, the vegetables, do they need to edit? Uh, um, I've experimented when I attempt to drag the stickers to view the sticker shown. Okay, so maybe you have, I think I know it, I'm not quite sure, but yes, you could go into edit mode and have, um, so all of these right here are movable. So someone, could, if you were, you know, sharing screens or doing an interactive session, um, they could, uh, oh, maybe not. Hmm. I, you know what, I, I'm gonna say no. Um, my gut is gonna say no here. It's not like Google Docs or Google Slides where you could actually, um, multiple users are in the same account, so no. Okay, uh, multiple users can't be logged in to the same Buncee and working on it at the same time. You could do that, like I said, with the phone and with, with the same account, but then 
the changes are not going to be predictable. Okay. Um, so I would suggest, I would not suggest trying to work with multiple people on one board at the same time. Okay. Um, that seems to me like a getting a little bit tricky. Um, and how can you connect it to Google Classroom? You can share it as a, as a link. You can um, um, in, let me see. Um, they have a, an entire pamphlet um, about this on, about using it for um, Google Classrooms um, on their website. Um, let me show you. Um, I'm gonna preview, preview this again. So this board is actually being saved to this, to this um, presentation as we speak. Um, I'm going to show my pages so I can navigate through my presentation. This is a really cool feature too, um, kind of like PowerPoint that has. Um, so right here I have um, the Buncee's like little manuals. Um, you have to click on the actual link. Um, land, uh, manuals to uh, working with Wakelet and uh, Flipgrid. Um, this one is uh, Google Classroom, how to use with Google Classroom. So um, when I send this out to you, um, please look through these links, um, Microsoft Teams and using the Immersive Reader. I had some little technical things with it today, but generally I've never had that happen before, so it must be me. Um, so um, let's take a look. Any more questions up here? Um, the QR code takes you to a non-working link on my phone. Okay, well, um, I, maybe because we weren't published yet. Um, let me see if I go to... Katrina? Yes, uh -huh. am I running out? <laughs> no, 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 this is Anthony. I just want to say um, I actually got the QR code to work on my Android device. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Marisol mentioned that she has an iPhone. I don't know if there's something about okay. the iPhone, but I got it to work on my Android. Okay, great. Okay, so so on the Android it worked, but um, maybe somebody could try it on an iPhone. I've never had a problem with it. Um, it's This is published right now. Um, this the, So you might try this one and see where it takes you. Should be the same one. Um, and so just try it again. Um, can I demonstrate um, the the QR the QR code? I'm not quite sure. Zakia, exactly. I'm not quite sure. Uh -huh. Sorry, she was. This is Zakia. She was asking about the link to the Google Classroom. Okay. So I actually yeah. put in the link to that document in her response. Thank in the response, you. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm kind of running out of time. <laughs> um, there's so many things to explore with Buncee, and I would really love to take you through more of them. Um, but for right now, it's just t time for me to kind of turn this over to you um, and give you a chance to practice with it. Um, I want you to go to buncee.com, okay, and you're going to be using my, my account, um, so I've created a, an account um, for, an, for this session, OTAN participants, um, and I've created um, a, a username, OTAN1, okay, and I created a, a simple login for you. So you enter your username, and then you go to OTAN1 and then you do simple login, okay, which is Fox Penguin, okay? You could also use, this is one of the things that were lost in the, um, <laughs> in the refresh, um, was that um, you can also use, have a username and a unique password. I find it with my students, my ESL students, it's so nice to just be able to give them um, a simple login. So they just need to find the fields and enter the, um, the information, right? That enter the, the code. So let me just take you really quick. I know I'm running out of time here, but um, this is, can you see my dashboard? This is my, my um, um, Buncee dashboard right here. Um, and you can see all of my boards that I've created um, and, and the ones that are shared with me, right? So if I go to shared with me, I can see all of my student boards and um, it goes on and on. Um, and here's some boards where uh, class uh, presentations have been shared here. Um, 
Okay, and let's see. Um, there's you can subscribe to boards. Let's see. Um, so I'm going to log out of my account basically. Okay, I'm going to log out here and I'm going to show you how to get in. So here is the Buncee homepage. Okay, and do you remember our um, username? It was OTAN1. Okay, and you get that little next button and you click here and it was oh what was the simple login it was fox penguin okay so um now i'm in now you're into your classroom it couldn't be easier really um and um now you're going to start so you're going to create a buncy create on 3.0 start from scratch and you can start by adding a background right pick something or if you don't like one of these um, you can search for something else um, add your text add information about yourself and then you're going to share it share it oh add a title like uh put your name right uh here costa okay so put your name and your um where you work, done. And then you're gonna share it with the teacher. And the teacher is Katrina Tamara. Share. So now that is going to go into my account. You can also get the code, link it up, share it to any um, anywhere you want, post it to your social media. Here's the links for Google uh, Classroom. I think that's Google Classroom and Teams. Um, I don't use Google Classroom, um, but I know many of you do. Um, and then, you could download it. You can download the thumbnail, download it as a PDF. It'll um, get saved to your computer. Um, and you can open the PDF, share it, store it, save it, however you would like to do it. Um, so let's see here. Let's go to questions. L last question. I just signed up for individual free access, but a lot of lot seems locked. Do you suggest paying the $10 monthly? I think you said. I do. Uh, I think it's worth it because I'm, um, I use it all the time. Um, and you can, um, you can also look into other options right now. Like I, I was talking about, they have other, um, they have the COVID-19 free accounts, uh, and the teacher accounts too, uh, school accounts. Um, so I hope that you, you all, um, can try this out. Um, I, okay, so doing the login, maybe you you go to the um, Buncee front page. You're gonna log in with OTAN one. Uh, I'm gonna um. This is only going to be live for today and tomorrow, so you better try it fast. I'm gonna uh, remove you from the classroom. Okay, <laughs> so um, but try it. Okay, um, this won't always work, um, and then. Oh, okay, so I have lots of templates going here. These are all of you. Remember to add your name, okay? Um, and then I'll be able to see it here, okay? Um, and I, I can also create a board. So I'll send you um, the presentation. You'll see shared with me. I'm gonna share the presentation with you. Um, this presentation, you'll find it here and, and shared with me, okay? And then boards, I'm going to set up another board so you can um you can add you would just take the embed link or the link to your project and then insert it here so play with this um, and then let me know what you think um, and i'm sorry i don't have more time to show um to show you more things um, but just let me know what you think about this tool um, how does it support your remote classroom what projects could you assign um, and again, please, please email me. Um, let me know if, if this was useful for you. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so and Katrina has her information there. If you want to go ahead and contact her, uh, if you have questions or for more information.